when Eric July launched the Ripiverse, no one was really quite sure what to expect. Uh, but within a little bit over the first 24 hours when he hit the million dollar mark, and now a couple weeks later, it's sitting at 3.4 million dollars with over 40,000 total purchasers. We're talking about comic book sales numbers of over 50,000 units. That's what we're talking about when it comes to Eric D. July and his new original comic book universe, The Ripiverse. He saw the garbage going on at Marvel in DC that's been plaguing it for years, and he decided, you know what? I think I can do this shit better than them. And so far, it's going incredible because people respect Ripa. People believe in what he's doing and what he's been preaching about for so long when it comes to comic books. So they're more than willing to support him, especially once they saw that the art for this looked legit as fuck. But despite that, despite the fact that this should be essentially the biggest story in the comic book industry right now, it's been ignored by a lot of these outlets, by a lot of these cucks out there. And, you know, Ripa puts this tweet out. Ah, so this is why at CBR has avoided coverage of the Ripaverse. Now, for some reason, I'm not able to view this tweet right here. Luckily, I got it pulled up here. And this is uh, David Hearth. David Hearth, I write about comics at CBR.com and you don't read comics.com. He, him, BLM ally and all around SJW. Yes, uh, you can... You, you can try to take that word if you want, as if it's not an insult. No, it absolutely is a fucking insult. Uh, but this is in reply to a, a decent thread because, you know, Eric's always fighting with people on Twitter. He is always fighting back against these crackhead idiots on Twitter. Uh, let's see to look at this entire thing. There are other items in the shop that people can buy. I spent about 200 bucks on this stuff and will happily do so again. The only people who complain about price points are pissy broke losers like yourself. 35 is a very fair price considering the length and the quality. And this is, of course, someone responding to Chloe Handler. Chloe Handler, who has done several like troll kickstart uh, comic book <laughs> campaigns where she makes like $1,000 in each of them. It's very fucking pathetic, but that's what she does. She's saying that... People are paying so much for this. He's just grifting people. Obviously, if people are willing to spend $35 on a 96-page comic book on a graphic novel, then that's the price point. You know what I mean? Some people think it's crazy that I would want to go to an NFL game and pay 200 bucks for a ticket. Some people do think that's insane, yet they sit there and they fill the stadium up. People pay that all the time because the demand is there. That doesn't mean it's for everybody. That doesn't mean that that price makes sense for everybody, but... It looks like it's been pretty successful so far. This started an argument right here with David Hearth. Again, from CBR, a guy who should be writing about all this stuff. CBR should be covering all this stuff, but they don't want to because Eric doesn't think the way that they want him to think. You can get Saga Volume 1, over 100 pages for $9.99. The Married Deaths of Layla Starr for $13. Watchmen for $25. This isn't a good value. You're just brainwashed. Gets fucking ratioed. Eric doesn't have deals in China to make the books for pennies on the dollars. Um, neither does Image or Boom. DC gets books printed in Canada. Try again. Uh, and he keeps on going on. Have you ever read an Image comic or Boom or DC? Excellent paper quality. I have plenty of money. I spend per week what one average backer spends at the comic store. And support a wife and her two kids. Uh, that's. I'm just going to say that. He didn't say that, but I said it. I support a wife and her two kids from another man, in all likelihood, with Disney annual passes. We, <laughs> you're bragging about having Disney annual passes. Look at me. I'm rich, bro. I spent 80 bucks on comics a week, and I have Disney annual passes so that my wife and her two children from another man can be, you know, can have all the enjoyment of the Disney parks. Holy shit. I just like quality comics from the best creator, which isn't why y'all or what you're all overpaying for. Then this is the thing that I think set a lot of people off. So is this the first comic you've ever read? I've been reading comics for over 30 years. And you know who I never heard of until a bunch of right wingers threw money at him? Eric July. What work has he done that makes you think this is worth the obscene money you've spent? I mean, you knew, right? You knew that this is how it would go down, that these people who work for these fucking shills, these uh, access media types, these people are bitter as fuck that Eric July is making more money than they could possibly imagine simply by claiming he wants to entertain people, by saying, I want to entertain you regardless of your politics, regardless of who you voted for. I just want to tell a good story. 
That's what Eric has claimed that he wants to do. That's what he's shown that he wants to do over and over and over again throughout his entire YouTube history. Now he's finally delving into the actual comic side. And a lot of people, over 40,000 people who have backed this project, $3.4 million worth of backing. Those people clearly believe that Eric July is going to do exactly what he said that he will do. And I firmly am in that camp. But a lot of these fucking cucks at CBR, they don't care if that's actually what he's going to do or not. They're just mad because he doesn't have the right opinion. He doesn't think like them and they don't want him to be successful. What absolute bullshit, but not a surprise coming from these cucks at CBR. Thanks for watching everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my PO box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.